representative collection where I take a look at some of the rocks and fossils that are in my own personal collection. And today I'm doing what is a, kind of a part two to the video that I released last week where I looked at Bed and Dingle in Shropshire and I'm going to take a closer look at the trilobite, the fossil that I found there. Now this trilobite species, I'm going to horribly mispronounce it, is Ogogenus cordensis and is quite a common trilobite from the Ordovician period. In the case of the Betten Dingle, it came from a formation called the Betten Shale, which is between 458 and 464 million years old. Uh, one thing I did do, besides cleaning up some of the, the moss and stuff that was on the fossil, is I did remove some of the mudstone that was here. You can see the slight change in the coloration there, and that did reveal a little bit more of the fossil. Sadly, we are missing a chunk that wasn't preserved, and we've only got the back end of the trilobite, roughly probably about half two thirds of the trilobites. Trilobites have three sections to them the cephalon, which is the head, which sadly in this specimen is missing, the thorax, which is this midsection here, and the pygidium, which is the tail, which is this bit here. Trilobites actually get their name trilobite from three segments and it's actually not from the front middle back but actually from the sides. So you've got the left and the right pleurella which are these two segments down here and then the central segment which is called the axial lobe putting down effectively the centre of the back of the animal. And these are actually quite nicely preserved in this specimen. Now when this animal was alive, these sections would have been made up of calcite and chitin and it is just an absolutely gorgeous little specimen. It's just a shame that the head is missing. Trilobites were one of the most successful fossil organisms that had ever existed on Earth. First being found in the fossil records at the beginning of the Cambrian, potentially into the late Lady Akron, and going all the way through finally be finished off in the end Permian mass extinction. So they managed to survive several mass extinctions on the way through, um, but they couldn't quite make it at the end of the Permian. Some lived across the bottom, which is what this one would have done. Others lived in the higher up in the water column. Trilobites are also one of the most important fossils that are used by geologists to help in the identification of various layers. Different species of trilobite lived at different ages. They also lived in different biogeographical ranges and, and different types of trilobites were able to assist in things like the uh, development of continental drift and the concepts of biogeography and biostratigraphy. So within the anatomy of the trilobites, the pleura, second, this one being on the right hand side, the legs of the animal would have been underneath this and this would have protected the animal from predation. And we actually have found fossils of trilobites that have curled up into a ball, helping to protect the softer undersides of them from predators that would have been hunting these animals in the ancient seas. I see beautiful segments from this wonderful little arthropod. It's a fantastic fossil, it's just one of the, my prized possessions within my collection, partly because it's a beautifully preserved um, two-thirds, sadly, of a trilobite. It's the best trilobite that I've got in my collection. I do have a couple of others or other sections, and it was just a fantastic find and the uh, on a fantastic day out in Benton Eagle. I'm not an expert on trilobites by any stretch of the imagination. So to help me identify this fossil, I did use the Natural History Museum in London's database and compared it to the images of some of the other ones that have been found. And that's it, that is my specimen of Oeogenus condensis. Beautiful trilobite from Tropia.